If you have a Mahjong set at home and you want to learn all the different scoring elements for Hong Kong Mahjong, try random pulls. If you're new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. And when you do, click the bell so you don't miss anything. Let's get to these random pulls. What is a random pull, you might wonder? It's just where you pull 13 random tiles, or 14 if you want to be the dealer, just to see what kind of a hand you might go for. I have a wind of the round indicator and I like to do four at a time. So we'll start with the East round. And I have my scorecard here. There's a link below the video to this. So if you wanna download that, feel free. In here are all the different scoring elements. This is a great way to memorize those. So you don't have to refer to that while you play. Let's do some random pulls. So all my tiles are out and they've been mixed. I'm just gonna roll the dice just to randomize where we might be seated at the table. This is really not part of the game. It's just to keep the variables fresh. So let's say we are in seat seven, which is west. So I'm gonna keep, oh, three. We'll keep a three on the dice. And this is east round. That could bring us some score. So I'm gonna take 14 random, or 13, we're non-dealer. So I'll take 13 random tiles. And let's see what we can do. And for this exercise, I think I'm just going to say that no score is required. We're gonna focus on the five block method and I'll explain that. So here we have the tiles that we might get in an actual game, just the random drawn tiles. So we have a three flower and a one flower. If we're seat three, this will bring us a score, one fawn. So that's kind of nice. We have one fawn already. So I'll just put those back there and we'll get two random replacements. So when you arrange your tiles, and it's okay to do that, it, when you are advanced, you don't need to arrange your tiles, but when you're just starting out, I recommend arranging them in suit and in order so that you can see patterns. So in this case, you can see we have only two dots and they're far apart, two, seven. In Hong Kong Mahjong, you're working with sets where you can either have three of a kind, four of a kind, or three in a sequence. So these are not gonna be helpful. We have a one, five, eight. Those won't be helpful either. Look at all these cracks though. And we have both Peng, which is a three of a kind, and Chow, which is three in a sequence, potential here. So if we have a two, three, here's a pair of threes, here's a pair of fives and a six, seven. If you think about the five block method, you want to look at your drawn tiles and identify blocks of three because you need four sets and a pair. The sets can be three in a sequence or three of a kind. So if you look at five blocks and then work to getting each one of those blocks to a place of strength, then you'll be better off during the game. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four blocks. So we're missing a block. If we were to play all cracks or maybe even cracks with winds and dragons, that would be a three fawn hand. So I would try for that in this particular case. And I would both chow and pung as as tiles are discarded. For example, we could chow this one, two, three, or two, three, four, and then we would be left with a potential chow here as well. Or we could maybe pung both of those. Either way, there's two good blocks right there. 
this could be punged and this could be a chow. All we would need is a wind dragon or another crack to then be ready with a pair. So even though we have five discards here, I think I would try for cracks or cracks with honors. That would be, if it's all cracks, that would be a six fawn hand plus one for the flower. If we went for half flush, which is all cracks with honors, that would be three fawn and then one fawn for the flower. These would all be discarded. So that was a really nice initial draw. Even though there's five discards, really all we need are honors and cracks. Let's just randomly pick three or four here. Let's see what we get. Flower and an honor. These could be discarded. But that just gives you an idea that we only really needed one more to get to that fifth block. That would have been just a fine addition. So that was kind of exciting. Let's do another one. So we're gonna now do south round. Oh, let's see which seat we might be in. So I rolled a three, that's west again. So south round, west seat. And that's non-dealer, so we'll get 13. For this random pull, we have two flowers. These are both four. They're not gonna help because we're in seat three. You have to have the flower that actually matches the number of your seat. So east is one, south is two, west is three, north is four. So we just got north's flowers. So even though they're not the flower for this player, we've taken that opportunity away from north. So it's not necessarily a bad thing to not get your flower. So let's see what we got in replacement. Okay, so we'll put them in order and in suit. So here, for blocks, we could have one, two, three. We have three pair. That is not necessarily a good thing. They're mixed suits, which is fine, because all pung, if we got all three of a kind, that's three fawn, and that's a decent hand. But we do have all these other tiles here. Let's see about other chow potential. So here's a potential chow right here, six, eight. Now that has what's called an inside weight where we need a seven dot to complete it. So that's pretty weak. We have a three, four, another inside weight or closed weight is another way to say that. This is isolated or we could use it here and do another inside weight or closed weight. So either way, we could just call this a block or even that a block, because we could use tiles on in either one of them. For example, this would be a side weight. We have either a four dot or a seven dot would work for that. So that's actually a strong block. So we have one, two. This could be a chow with an inside or closed weight. We have two pair here. So really, I would, I would say I would discard this first because we could potentially turn, turn both of these into chows. Uh, and then here we could maybe draw into a six crack or an eight crack to help out there. So there's a lot of work to do here, but I would start by discarding here and play all chows, all three in a sequence. Now, if I drew another pair, I might switch to all pung. Right now we only have three pair. So three pair, these would all be potential pungs, but we need another pair and even another one would be better to really get set up for all three of a kind. So I think we're in between all pung or all chow. If you would do something different with this, write it in the comment section. So let's go on to the 
west round. And let's just say that we're going to be in seat five, which is east. So I'll put a one up on that dice. So for this random poll, we have a lot of tiles that could be used for chows. We have a one, two, here's a five, seven, nine. We could either do five, six, seven, or seven, eight, nine. We have a one, two. Here we have two pair, seven, eight, and then here we have a two, four. This seven, eight, there's two pair there, but these could be turned into two potential chows just by splitting them apart. And they're side weights. We could either use a six dot or a nine dot for those. So this here would be an edge weight. We're waiting on a three bam. Here would be middle weights or closed weights. This would also be a closed weight and this is isolated. So I think that I would probably start by discarding the seven crack and try for all chow. All chow. That would be a one fawn hand. We have no flowers. That would be a fawn as well. So that's what I would play here. All chow, no flowers, two fawn. And just try to fill in these middle weights if you would do something different here, let me know. Now we will do north round. And let's just say we're in seat eight, which is north. For this random pull, I would try for all chow again. Here's a three, four, side weight. Here's a three, four, side weight. Here's a pair, you always gotta have a pair. Here we have a one, three, that would be a closed weight, and a three, four. We have one, two, three, four, five blocks. These would be discards. And the nice thing about this particular random pull is that we have two side, or two, yeah, two side weights. We would just need to really fill these in to get comfortable. I would play a chow hand. That would be one fawn for all chow and one fawn for no flowers. So two fawn. I hope this exercise gives you an idea of how you play Hong Kong Mahjong. It really is a lot of fun and the scoring is very simple. Don't forget that there's a link below the video to that player reference where you can learn the scoring yourself. And if you have a set at home, give this exercise a try. If you don't have a set, I'll leave a link to where you can get one. So let me know what you think about random pulls. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, consider subscribing. And when you do, click the bell so you get notification for when I post new videos. That way you won't miss any opportunities to learn some new strategy or maybe pick up an inside of the game that'll give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next set of random pulls for Hong Kong Mahjong, may all your picks be keepers.